introduction and framing, in particular from, uh, obviously it'll be from the Lemelson perspective, which many of you know is around science, technology, engineering, invention-based businesses to serve the core. And then that'll be about, you know, five, ten minutes. And then I really want to spend uh, a good amount of time with each of our panelists who have some really deep experience in building local innovation ecosystems. And they'll each have ten minutes to provide a bit of background on what they do and provide you some experience, uh, some understanding into the experience they've had in this topic. Then we'll have about 20 minutes of just some facilitated Q&A um, to help, uh, you know, just tease out some of the differences and uh, opinions uh, in this space. And then finally, I really would like to spend at least 20 to 30 minutes uh, on Q&A from the audience, because obviously you're here because you're interested in something, uh, and we'd like to obviously answer those questions as well. So before we actually went into the panel, um, you know a little bit about these folks already, I'd like to know a little bit and allow the panelists to see who is in the room right now. We're going to do a little bit of gymnastics, just so I can be able to better gauge uh, what perspectives are in the room. So if you are a funder or investor, would you please stand up? All right. Three, four, okay. All right, and everyone knows who they want to go to, right? No, I'm kidding, sorry. Um, if you are an entrepreneur, uh, would you please stand up, running a, actively running a business right now? Great, good number of you, great. Any academics, university? Stand up. Stand up. Oh, good. That's great. That's really, really good. I like that. Um, and then um, government. Do we have any governmental representatives? Local, state, federal? Yep. Oh, yay. Great. OK, perfect. Thanks very much. Who else is here that hasn't st stood up? Stand up. <laughs> So, so what, are, what are you? And then if, if they say a sector, then you sit down. The sector that you're in or that you are representing, then you sit down, okay? Yeah. Uh, I represent, I am the CEO founder for Value Creation Catalyst. I am a business facilitator for social businesses, startups, and in the semi sector. Primarily a link between the incubator and the entrepreneurs, providing them with services ranging from industry research, business planning, business development, fundraising, and strategic thinking, so, and a catalyst. So if you're a superman, then stand, sit down. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> this is excellent. I completely forgot about that and critical to the ecosystem. Technical assistance providers, business uh, support, um, incubation services. If you represent that, then go ahead and sit down. Great. All right, who's left? Who else do we have left? Go ahead. Yes. Potential, oh, nascent entrepreneurs, great. Any others? Any others who are nascent entrepreneurs? Nascent entrepreneur, great. Okay, good. We... Corporate, oh. Okay, you've intrigued me. You're a corporate from... Mike? So who so, are you? I'm from a team in corporate okay. where we try to actually link in all the value chain partners so that the social entrepreneurs get uh, all the required uh, That's great. Uh, I'm, uh, yeah. incentives to do their job. Thank you. This is great. Well, I mean, the, uh, in corporations and industry, obviously a huge part of the ecosystem. I, this is fabulous. Actually, we are the ecosystem right here. This is great. I'm glad we're, you're all here. So. Very quick um, introduction to the session. <coughs> and I'm going to apologize. I uh, have a really bad cough. Oh, is this linked up? Perfect. <coughs> God, I'm so sorry. I need to see which side to pop. Okay, <clears throat> that's better. 
So just a little bit about the, a little bit about the Lemelson Foundation. Uh, this is our, our legacy is invention, science and technological invention to improve lives. This is uh, Jerome and Dorothy Lemelson, his wife, our founders. They started the foundation because Jerome himself was an inventor, uh, an entrepreneur, and he struggled his whole life against an ecosystem did, that did not support his work. So when he finally was recognized and made a fortune for his, in, in, his inventions and his ingenuity, um, he created the Lemelson Foundation to support more people like him. Inventors and people who wanted to see products that would get into the hands of users and businesses that would scale to have an impact, a real impact that could be felt globally. So our uh, mission is to improve lives, use the power of science, technology, engineering, invention to strengthen the US economy, as well as to improve lives of the world's poorest in, in the global, global and developing countries. I'll focus on the second, obviously, because that's our interest today. Just a quick slide to talk about how when we talk about science, engineering, and invention, we're looking to solve, to develop products and businesses that solve these problems. They, saw, they you know, uh, 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 reduce child mortality, improve, improve maternal health, etc. Okay, a little bit of a framework to share with you um, how we have, re have regarded invention, and this is a, a framework that I think will help us, hopefully, in the discussion with regards to invention, innovation, and, and social entrepreneurship ecosystems. So there are lots of things that need to happen um, in order for a, an entrepreneur to succeed, an enterprise to succeed, uh, and as we all know, it cannot really be just on the shoulders of, of an inventor, an innovator, or, or a social entrepreneur. There are lots of steps, though. First um, is to inspire people to see that this can be done, that things don't need to be done in the way that their parents and their grandparents have always done. These ha that you really, these are through examples. These are through examples that look like and feel like that person who you are inspiring. The second is to provide emerging innovators with the knowledge and tools to do their best work, education, training, connections. Third, um, help launch these enterprises um, and offer support through the earliest incubation phases and fourth, obviously, um, support to scaling of these businesses, connection to the marketplace so that their, project, their products and services actually expand their reach and have the impact that they envision. So we have found that the gaps uh, are biggest in the earliest stages and hence why all of our work really does focus on that early stage space, which really is about capacity development and, and ecosystem building around the, the, the catalyst, the entrepreneur. So just a few examples to make this a little bit more real. Lemelson has, uh, in our inspiration work, worked with the National Public Radio, NPR, uh, one of the uh, to air stories of inventors. Um, this airs weekly on a U.S. radio station that's really popular with decision makers in the United States. And these stories highlight challenges and make very concrete and real the amazing things that inventors and entrepreneurs are doing to improve lives of the poor in the U.S. as well as abroad. Um, from saving Malawian babies with aquarium pumps to make uh, low-cost CPAP machines to batteries made out of wood. A lot of amazing, interesting stuff that just really piques your interest and makes you want to learn more. Secondly, in our education work, we're building the ecosystem in the, the, this is a particular example from the United States, but I'd love to hear more about opportun, uh, uh, other uh, such mechanisms that happen in India. We work with an organization called the National Collegiate Inventors and Innovators Alliance. We fund this intermediary organization that then has created a network of over 300 US-based universities to do two things. The, as a member, you actually can apply for grants to support student-led companies, actually getting students inspired and, built, and building skills with student teams by actually building a, a product building a company, so small grants to actually start up those kinds of experiences, as well as secondly, grants to create courses and programs. We know that it can't just be one student. There actually has to be a, a, an ecosystem within that particular institution 
um, that, that actually, you know, there's a center for that. So often these courses and programs are really at the nexus of the engineering school and the uh, um, uh, business school. Just an example there. And then finally, my last example, many of you know, uh, Vilgro. Uh, as we've heard, uh, all, all of you, probably the aspiring entrepreneurs and existing entrepreneurs today, you have a lot of challenges. And what are the types of ecosystemic interventions that we can provide to help your journey? Uh, and we are supporting groups like Vilgro that are here on the ground, have those built-in networks in India to be able to connect you to uh, everything you might possibly need. Um, anyway, I'll stop there. Those are just some examples of at least how Lemelson is engaged in building ecosystems. And I will turn it over to Lena, who will give us more a pan-India flavor. So thank you very much, um, Abby. Uh, so my name is Lena Sonner. I work for something called Ukapi Research and Consulting, uh, based out of Bombay and uh, Chennai. Uh, so together with Vilgro, and Vilgro's, especially Vilgro's Unconventional Local Initiative, I've been doing a piece of research trying to understand uh, what exists in social enterprise ecosystems outside of local, uh, local social enterprise e ecosystems outside of the main metros of India, so tier two, tier three cities. Um, it's a piece of research that has been sponsored by the City Foundation and IDRC. And the, the reason behind doing this research is that we um, generally, when we talk about social enterprise ecosystems in India, we're very focused on Bombay, Bangalore bits of Delhi, bits of Chennai. Um, and there's little, very little information about what else is out there. Um, and we also felt that there's a lot of um, talk about social impact uh, and poverty alleviation outside of the metros, but most of the ecosystem actors actually sit in the main metros. So this is a piece of uh, research to first understand what exists out in, in, um, in outside of the main metros, and second, um, what are the actual needs as expressed by local ecosystem stakeholders rather than those of us sitting in, again in the metros? Um, and it, the hope is that by having some answers to these questions, we can better invest and, and enable uh, local and regional ecosystems across India. So what we did, uh, we did, so I'm an academic, so I need a conceptual framework. So we put together, a, uh, we, we decided that if we think about the ecosystem, as having a whole bunch of different components. It's got a number of stakeholders. It's got entrepreneurs, it's got financial, non-financial support, um, such as incubators, it's got facilitators, consultants, advisors. Um, it's got higher education, providing research and skills, um, and skilled um, human capital. Um, it's got, and it needs networks, network platforms for these different stakeholders to interact and connect and collaborate. Um, we need policies from government or donor strategies and macro enablers to, to enable this space. Um, and uh, we need to take into account the local context, um, the habits and practices, the local um, culture, uh, which uh, has an impact on how, how all these components interact and how they work. Um, so that's, um, that's our sort of conceptual um, background to looking at a local ecosystem and the different components that exist. Um, so we then went on to look at a bunch of different ways of creating indicators for local ecosystems. We looked at doing business indicators by the World Bank. Uh, we looked at the various um, innovation systems uh, measurement uh, tools and indicators that, such as those, um, the European um, Union scoreboard and that sort of thing, measuring at the national and regional level how can you look at innovation and what, what exists. Now, one of the issues around these um, uh, measurements is that they generally exist in the West or at the national level, but there's an awful lot of data available. Um, in regional India and local ecosystems in tier, three, tier, tier two, tier three cities, there's very little existing data that we can go on, especially for social enterprise. Um, so we created our own set of indicators based on, on, on what already exists, but um, adjusted to the local context and needs of social enterprises. Um, we also tried to look at, okay, what can we ask when there's very limited data available and when there's actually fairly limited social enterprise activity, which, uh, which is an assumption we made. Um, we, we, one thing we decided is that we need to broaden, we can't just look at social enterprise on its own. We need to look at the potential to create a social enterprise ecosystem. So we broadened 
um, our focus from just social enterprises to also civil society, conventional startups, conventional startup support, um, and a range of sort of higher education and vocational skills training efforts. Um, and from that, we created a list of indicators, and I'm not going to go through each of these, but um, we've got six sets of indicators we're looking at the local economy and the context. We're looking at um, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial activities, is there an entrepreneurial buzz? Um, we're looking at what kind of support exists, is there financial or non-financial support? Um, is there social enterprise specific support or might there be um, conventional enterprise support? Uh, is, there, are there, is there a buzzing um, higher education hub? Um, is there a lot of activity there? Is there a lot of entrepreneurship activity within these um, uh, higher education institutions? Might there be an e-cell or an incubator? Um, what about networks and um, collaborations and communications? Are people communicating and talking to each other? Are there existing local network platforms? Um, and then look, lastly, we also looked at what about the government's role? What are they doing? Is, are there either entrepreneurship or innovation policies more generally in the local state? Or might there be um, even social enterprise policies? Is, is social enterprise or conventional enterprise innovation an express priority by the, gov the state government? Uh, and once we had these indicators, um, we then worked with uh, Bill Goes and Convention Local. Um, they spent um, lots of effort going around to 15 different cities this year. We visited nine of those cities um, and we uh, then try to systematically collect data on the, uh, based on these, if these six sets of indicators that we had. We tried to interview about 25 uh, people and organ or individuals and organizations from across this ecosystem. Um, so again, entrepreneurs, stakeholders, policymakers, bankers, um, uh, universities and such like. Um, one thing to, to mention here that when we, walk, when we went around looking at these things, we're not trying to sort of create a um, a set of data that you can measure, but you can compare like for like. We said, let's have a dashboard uh, approach instead where we describe each ecosystem on its own. We're not going to say, uh, make up numbers because it's so early. It's so, um, this is the first pilot, it's very early days and it's because there's so limited data available. So it's more about describing what's there and drawing out some trends and find out. Um, so I, I think you've all been given this brochure. This is a little snapshot of the nine ecosystems we've been to. Um, there'll be a report coming out later this year. Um, but just to give you, so here's a couple of cities, um, just to give you an, um, an idea. It's, so it's trying to draw out you know, the fact that, for instance, ecosystems are very fragmented. The efforts that exist are very individual, very fragmented in, in most of these local ecosystems. Um, and when we talk about local ecosystems here, we looked at um, city with a sort of radius of two, three hours around. So we looked at the city and its local district. We didn't go um, statewide apart from government policies because policies are, policies are obviously um, state-based rather than uh, district-based. Um, so for instance, you have two examples here. Lucknow has some really good um, higher education colleges. Um, there's an IM Lucknow which um, actually has quite a lot of social enterprise activity. Um, there is an emerging startup scene, a sort of IT startup scene, and there's also uh, quite a few emerging social enterprises, and you see that there's emerging startups, uh, sorry, startup incubators, there are startup networks, um, but there's very, very limited interest from government. Uh, Bhopal, on the other hand, government is quite active there. They've set up the State Innovation Council, um, they're st setting up their own state uh, ministry for innovation. Um, it's, it's a massive education hub, 150 plus colleges in and around Bhopal, but very, very limited entrepreneurship activity, very limited, or startup entrepreneurship activity, very limited social enterprise activity. There's one or two individual, um, individuals acting as mentors or, or trying to create support organizations, um, but really very, very, very nascent, but obviously an, a great opportunity with so many young people coming in um, to study. Uh, so that's where we are now, and so where we're taking this is, um, you've got this snapshot now. Um, this week we're also publishing a framework paper, um, which is going to go online on, on Vilgo's website later this week. We are writing a bunch of blog posts on Nextillion, and we'll be publishing in about two, three months, we'll be publishing nine ecosystem reports on the different ecosystems 
um, that we've been visiting. Uh, and we really hope that this is going to build um, more discussions about decentralizing the um, social enterprise ecosystem in India, um, and also more discussions about how do we measure it, how do we look for indicators, how do we um, try to so systematically understand what's going on each year, how, are, how the ecosystem's evolving, and also really taking into account the local um, demand what local stakeholders say they need um, in order to enable these ecosystems. So thank you very much. Thanks, Lina. And from the researcher perspective, we'll move on to an investor perspective with Mukesh. Please. So I think uh, from our perspective, when we look at entrepreneurship or entrepreneurs, there are a lot of differences in the stage that they operate. So somebody who is coming up with an idea, is very his requirements, his challenges are very different from somebody who has commercialized his business, started achieving revenues. Uh, then depending on sectors, again there are huge differences. Somebody working on an uh, information technology business, his requirements are very different from a medical device entrepreneur. Uh, so there are differences based on the sector, differences based on the stage of their own evolutions. So I think this ecosystem word itself needs to be expanded. What do we mean by ecosystem? Uh, what is needed in which cities? And uh, the answer is based on what is the pipeline looking like in that particular city. So when we say ecosystem, we let's start from those who want to become entrepreneurs, <coughs> right? So they need some inspiration, they need exposure to uh, what entrepreneurship is like, because our society generally or you know historically has not been very entrepreneur friendly, a social culture. So there are challenges in that. When you move beyond inspiration and exposure stage and somebody has decided they want to become entrepreneur. I went to some of the unconvention cities and I was surprised some of them were asking questions. I have five ideas in my mind. I don't know which one to work on. I don't know which one will fail, which one will work. So how should I pick which idea you know, I should start implementing on? And I don't even know where to start from. So. Again, different challenges when he has moved from stage one to stage two. Then if he has decided that he wants to do something, I'll again use an example of health. Somebody has decided to build a device to, let's say, for example, prick-free hemoglobin measurement device. Technology itself is challenging. Uh, there are no, there are, there are no you know, earlier innovation that you can look at and you see what worked, what didn't work. Uh, Number of skills required in team are so different. So you need a doctor, you need an engineer, you need a person who has design background, you need somebody with a marketing background. How do you bring that team together that will take that idea to commercialization? And then once there is a, there is a decent team that can pro probably execute on what the vision is or what the problem they're trying to solve, how do they understand that this is the product that customer requires? Many times, we as an entrepreneur, we start thinking this is a problem. But that is a problem that we think exists. Customer may not necessarily think that is a problem. Or his, uh, you know, uh, requirement for a solution may be very different from what we have thought. So again, uh, you know, how do you, how do you ensure that you have understood the problem well and you have created a solution for that? When you move from that state, then there are business plan competitions, accelerators, and now there are so many business plan competitions, so many accelerators, which one should you go to? Uh, so there are confusions in that. I know in each of the cities you don't have four or five business plan competitions, but still, where would you get the best support from? And once you have moved from that stage, then you require some seed funding, you require uh, experienced entrepreneur who understands your challenges, either marketing or operational or how to you know, win initial customers or how to scale your business. So it's a wide range that we are looking at. So when we say ecosystem, we need to say, okay, what is required in which city and who is providing what? So if there are good business plan competitions in a city like Pune, you don't need to launch another business plan competition. What happens after somebody wins a competition? Is there an ecosystem delivering that support? If it is not there, then that has to be created. 
Uh, I also think that different cities have different requirements. So Jaipur, very vibrant entrepreneurial culture. A lot of people are addressing social issues, but they may not think themselves as a social entrepreneur. And if there's a funding requirement, where should they go to? Should they go to a mainstream venture capitalist or should they go to a social entrepreneur? Uh, who would brainstorm these questions with them? Where are they going to get funding from? Uh, so even if there's entrepreneurial culture, social impact related network is not there. Uh, when we did our first uh, unconvention local in Jaipur, a lot of entrepreneurs who said that there were 15, 20 social entrepreneurs in the room, they said they had never met with each other. Mm -hmm. Operating in the same city, they had never met. And that was a trigger for them to start thinking that every three months maybe we should have a coffee or a tea between us and we are you know, having similar sort of challenges to so share our experiences. When we went to Patna, there's hardly anything, maybe we'll hear your experience today. But there were a uh, lot of youngsters with some very good ideas. There's nothing, there's nothing in terms of ecosystem, there's no mentor, there's no funding, there's no investor. How do you, how do you take these entrepreneurs and build uh, sustainable enterprises around them? If I pull that entrepreneur out of Patna, bring him to either Chennai, Mumbai or Bangalore and help him build the business, then you are taking him away from his customer again. So when he goes to an investor, investor will tell him, you are not closer to your customer. You don't understand your customer. I'll give you money if you go back to Patna. So <laughs> how, do you, how do you deal with those challenges? Uh, I also think that in terms of uh, ecosystem, we need to start thinking beyond networking. All the events that happen in cities, they are mainly focused on networking. Uh, there needs to be real work with the entrepreneurs. Rolling up your sleeves, sitting up with the entrepreneur and understanding what is his challenge and how should it best be addressed. There are a lot of entrepreneur cells in universities. I think we need to build uh, capacity there. So investors need to work with these e-cells. Uh, also, I see people saying that I have five mentors. If you ask them, okay, how frequently do you talk to them? Let's say I, speak, I spoke with him maybe once for an hour in one year or never met him again. The generic mentoring doesn't work, especially at an early stage of entrepreneurship. You want continuity in a relationship with the mentor. You uh, want longer debates about things. So this ecosystem also has to move away from generic ad hoc mentoring with just one hour of conversation with, an, with a person that you'll never see again. And uh, also, incubators, entrepreneur cells, business plan competitions, they also need to start thinking about building sector on sector and domain expertise. You can't create a competition or an event where you have health entrepreneur coming in, somebody working on solar coming in, somebody working on you know, uh, uh, livelihoods working in. How do, you, how do you create the whole ecosystem of invest, uh, investors, mentors, uh, how do you address talent gaps with such a wide variety of sectors? So that needs to happen. And also I think uh, all the uh, you know, stakeholders in this system are excited about going to cities and wanting to do things. There should be collaboration. You don't need three, four events in Patna. Let's start with one, let's start with one serious focused effort that is addressing all the challenges that exist. Back to you, Adi. Thank you, Mukesh. Rajiv, please, with a specific perspective from a... Uh, my, I am Rajiv. Uh, I am representing BRLPS, that is Bihar Rural Livelihood Promotion Society, uh, better known as GVK. Uh, this is a government society, and we, as a BRLPS GVK, uh, act as a facilitator to the social innovation ecosystem or social enterprise ecosystem. What the Mukesh and Lina has said that uh, we are not uh, asking for anything, but we have moved one step ahead, and we are just simply acting as a facilitator to the social innovation ecosystems. Uh, on the one part, we have convinced around the Jivika, we are convinced that what the rural people, people who are living in the rural areas, they need their income generated, income more income they need. 
And this can be done only through their livelihood generations. So we have to focus on their livelihood interventions. And after livelihood interventions, we have so outreach. Like right now, we have more than 1,30,000 self-help groups are covering around more than 30 uh, lakhs households. We have 20,000 community professionals. We have trained them. Uh, like they are the working as a village resource person, job resource person, poultry resource person. So they are the community professionals. We have workforce than more than 3,000, in which includes the young professionals we recruit from the premier institutes like Irma Anand, SIS, XLRIs, other management institutes. So we train them, uh, we hire them for the three years. Uh, we hire them for the three years and we ask these young professionals for the first years we provide them the market uh, which are the uh, self-help groups to go and work with them. Second year they, you choose your area, thematic areas, <coughs> verticals where you want to work and third year you come with this idea prototype. What do you want to do with this market force, market area? So these young professionals around, we have 130 young professionals right now working with us. So these scenario we have tried to uh, make a community centric ecosystem. And on this basis, uh, we have started our journey in 2007, where we have connected the Vihar Innovation Forum 1. In that, in Vihar Innovation Forum 1, we have shortlisted 25 social entrepreneurs, social enterprises. Out of 25, BRLPS has made uh, agreement or contract a partnership with the five, like Pradhan, EDA, Sudha Sakti, and Comfit. Uh, one of the uh, shortlisted CPSL has got the DFID incubation uh, training also. So this was the first journey. Uh, the journey, result of the first journey was that we started doing SRI methodology in agriculture with the Pradhan. And <coughs> over five years, uh, we influenced the government of Bihar, said that SRI should be the major part in the agriculture roadmap of the Bihar. It has become a major portion in the agriculture roadmap of the Bihar, SRI. So this led to us to force us to do the second Bihar Innovation Forum. In the second Bihar Innovation Forum, uh, we have gone across the pan-India. We have uh, shortlisted 125 social entrepreneurs across the India who have high impacts among the ruler people and has the willingness to work with us in Bihar. Out of 125 partners, uh, we have validated, we have all the, all the processes. We have showcased them, so we had asked them, choose your area in which you want to work. This is the one part. The second part, in the Bihar, we also done the, uh, uh, within the Bihar, we have asked, uh, we have looked out for the grassroots innovators, the people who are doing, who are solving their own problem without any help without any incubator, without any financial support, without any government sayings. So we thought that these people are the main people who can solve their problem. So if they can, their solutions can be scaled up, the community problem can be sought out. So this year uh, we have gone into Bihar, we have selected 178 grassroots innovators within the Bihar. These uh, grassroots innovators, uh, from the, our perspectives, it's not only technology. We have uh, uh, just convinced us it may be beyond the technology, maybe a process, maybe a methodology, maybe a business model, maybe a delivery mechanism, service delivery mechanism. So these are the ideas which we have uh, looked for the grassroots innovators. And we have 178 grassroots innovators, which they have, we have showcased them, we have awarded them, and we are just looking forward uh, for the all stakeholders of the social enterprise ecosystem, social innovation ecosystem, to just come <coughs> with us, work with us. So the ruler poverty or the ruler mass has been, in, their income can be enhanced, their livelihood and options can be more wider. So this is the way we have gone through. Great. Thank you, Rajiv. So we only have about half an hour left, and I'm going to um, actually take and make an executive decision to actually open up the floor for one or two questions before we got into some of because we've been talking so much at you guys. I'd like you to 
you know, wake up a little bit. So um, can we uh, maybe take one or two questions from the audience just as a little break before we go into a, a more moderated uh, panel? Please. Yeah. I am Achita Sharma. And, uh, my question is related to um, the ecosystem study, which we just recently concluded um, on, in Bangalore. And interestingly, the models which uh, both of you have talked about and on studying the ecosystems, I think one thing which we realized was a socio-cultural context, uh, which has been ignored by many. I think each city and each ecosystem has its own cultural context. And integrating that is uh, imperative, uh, not just important. Um, we see that even from an impact assessment angle also, that people focus on social, economic, and ecological, but the, cu but the cultural context is always missing. And I think as we approach an ecosystem study from a ground-up situation, I think it would be better. I wanted to get your opinion on that, that is one. And the second is when, during our study, we realized the importance of the informal sector and the misfit entrepreneurs. I think they have a very critical role uh, to play uh, in supporting the so-called urban entrepreneurs or the mainstream entrepreneurs. So wanted to get your views on, on both these points. So on the uh, context of the city, I, I, I completely agree. And uh, so when we talk about the local context, we include local economy, local industry, but also um, sort of more social norms, habits and practices, so soft institutions, if you were. Um, and we see that across um, some of so good example, Jaipur, very entrepreneurial, has been a, a trading hub. Compare that to somewhere like Patna or, or, or Popal, which has a lot less of that kind of entrepreneurial spirit. And of course, that will have an impact on people's choices and, and, um, uh, and, and how easy it is to become an entrepreneur or start something. Um, and the second question was? The importance of informal sector. He, um, is that for me as well, or that's for... Okay, yeah, and so we include, so that's one of the reasons we broadened the study, because I think this kind of um, very narrow um, focus on social enterprises that we come across in a lot of the... As a, in a lot, uh, when we look at sort of natural level conversations on social enterprise, it doesn't really work when you go out to outside of the metros, because there's so much activity going on, uh, which isn't a pure social enterprise, but it's, it's still social in that it provides goods or services or or livelihood opportunities for um, lower income groups. <coughs> Rajiv? For Rajiv also, yeah? The importance of informal sector in the Rajiv ecosystem. Rajiv be in a better position because we uh, usually work yeah. with for profit yeah. enterprises that are scalable and sustainable. And our experience has been when you go into an informal sector, if the entrepreneur does not have a vision to build a scalable business, he may be happy with the activity level that he's doing. If you tell him that this needs to scale beyond your city or district, the entrepreneur himself may not be comfortable or may not want to do that. So uh, that's an issue that we have seen as an investor. But yeah, just, that's right. That's right what Mukesh, uh, Mukesh is saying. But we thought it's otherwise. If we uh, generate thousands of social innovators, 10,000 of social innovators who are doing their small practices in small districts or towns, this can uh, be as seen as a larger perspective can be a scale. Uh, hi, my name is Raju. Uh, just a quick question to Mukesh, uh, also, sir, or Mr. Rajiv. Uh, do you believe in your experience that you know if we can provide relevant training to these entrepreneurs, you are able to overcome their natural inhibition to scale and grow? Uh, you just mentioned briefly. That's one problem, but you said you, you may be able to inspire them, but have you seen any hard, I would say, data you know, that there is that potential to scale up if they're given relevant training? Uh, exactly, I missed that. Uh, when we are working with the, as a NRLM, uh, skill upgradation is one of the major area where we are working. Is. So for the skill upgradations, the people who are living in the rural areas, uh, their numbers are large and they need their skill applications. We have hired so many partners to train them. Uh, we are organizing this, uh, so many events. Uh, we have around 20, 25 partners who will train these rural youths according to their areas they, cho they choose, which enterprises they want to do. And we do a survey, we do a form survey. We ask them to come for the residential training. And after that, we have this partnership with this trainer so that for the one year, they will keep track of them. So where they are doing, indulging or something or not, 
they are doing some enterprises or not, where they have left it or not. So we have this partner that says they will keep track for the one year and after, within the one year, we will also try to mentor them and ask the, all the uh, stakeholders, like incubators, mentors, finance supporters, to come with this skill, uh, train, skill trained purpose to train them. Our results are just, we have just started. Uh, earlier, we were working the very small scale. Uh, the people from rural areas, they are mostly invested in the service sectors, like uh, mechanic repairing, something like. Now we have gone on the larger scale. So next six months, we will see the results. Thank you. We'll take one more question, then I'm going to take hold. Hold on. Uh, sorry, were you waiting here? Sorry. Over here? Uh, hi, my name is Aruna. I, I have a couple of very short questions. The, the slide on, you know, the progression from incubation going to market, I don't remember all the steps. But what I find in supporting student entrepreneurs, and that's been my experience, is it's really like a concentric circle because you never know one, when one ends and the other starts. So, you know, what's the perception on uh, overlaps between the, the support and the ecosystem available for such support. And the other is when we are talking about localized context, it's also the lack of vernacularity in the process. I mean, business plan competition applications are in English, workshops are in English. So just because somebody is an entrepreneur that doesn't speak English, um, the these platforms become inaccessible. So what can we as ecosystem supporters do to bring the vernacularity back? Great. Um, I'll, I'll just respond quickly to the, um, the, the linear versus iterative and kind of li lines versus concentric circles question. I could not agree more. That actually that whole linear framework has really gotten me in trouble many times and I, I completely agree. It's actually the intent of it was actually arrows that go back and go continually iterate and sometimes getting to the end when you have a business and a product and suddenly finding that that is absolutely not what you need to do and go back to the drawing board to the idea phase. That actually, in terms of what Lummelson supports and what the work of the intermediaries that we support is actually a critical piece unless we see that constant iteration that restless iteration, constant customer feedback, not just from customers, but investors and others in the ecosystem like government, unless we see that iterative change, we don't invest in them. So that's, I think, incredibly important. Thank you for bringing that up. In terms of the inaccessibility question, there may be others here more appropriate than I to talk about that question, inaccessibility of current platforms. Relating to vernacular languages that yeah. Well, it sounds like language, forms, ways of engaging. So I think that's a role that you will have to play. Expecting, uh, uh, you know, somebody running a business <coughs> competition to, uh, so what they have to, you have to understand that there will be screening going at their end. You know, if they get 500 applications and they have to narrow that 500 down to 50, they will have to involve investors, mentors to figure out which of these and entrepreneurs have a better you know, success with this. So, if uh, if they are if they are using investors and mentors, if I have somebody who doesn't speak either Tamil or Kannada in my team, and your entrepreneur, if I allow him to submit application in your language, then that could lead into other issues. So, you will have to work with an entrepreneur to make sure that he submits his plan or he is able to uh, you know speak that language. What will also happen is. At the first stage, we may be able to address this issue, but if he is able to scale his solution and if he starts talking to investors for a much bigger round of funding, this will be a continuous problem. So uh, we will have to figure out either he'll, he will have to hire somebody in his team who is able to interact with the investors, interact with the you know, larger ecosystem. So I think this is something that you will have to encourage. Yeah, I, I, I kind of disagree. I think. I think the ecosystem really ought to decentralize and democratize. Yeah. I find it very elitist. I don't understand why um, a language that is spoken by a minority in this country is more or less the only language, say English, uh, that this ecosystem runs on. Um, and I, 
Uh, although it helps me because my other languages are limited. Um, and I think, so what we see, for instance, in, in Bihar, where, where a lot of the uh, Bihar Innovation Forum is in Hindi, and a lot of that outreach also reaches an awful lot more people than what English um, speaking efforts do. And I think we need to look at, if we're looking at decentralizing the ecosystem, we also need to move away from English only and think about, there, there's so many clever technologies now and clever ways of using multiple languages. Why are we not doing that in this ecosystem? If I could just, a quick interjection though, also, ultimately, we need to be uh, aligning values and aligning outcomes as well, right? Um, any support system within an ecosystem, so for example, understanding Vilgro and Vilgro's goals as, in, as investors and intermediaries is highly scalable glo global companies. You know, not everyone in Jaipur is going to be a global entrepreneur. So it's all about getting the right entrepreneur to the right services at the right time, at the right stage. Um, and you know, other, there are other types of support systems which we'll be looking at small to medium enterprise or tiny enterprises, individual companies, and that type of support will be quite different. Um, and, and it should be. In a rich ecosystem, you will have support systems for all those types of entrepreneurs. So, sorry, step out of moderator role and a little opinion there. Anyone else wanted to talk about that? No? Okay. I'll just, uh, um, before I get into another question, um, uh, there was a question that I did want to ask of, of, of the the panelists, if you're interested and available to able to speak to this, for me at least, I don't know if others feel the same, I feel sometimes that ecosystem is such a fuzzy word and people get very confused when I say it and so I'm asking to experts who have actually worked in this. Um, in particular, people want to do something about it. So I'm interested in, in your experience, what have you found is the lever for catalyzing the ecosystem and limit it to one. You know, if there's kind of one specific ecosystemic actor that must be there or else nothing else will happen, or um, specific intervention or, you know, just special sauce that has to be there or nothing will happen. Just wonder if you have an opinion, because I know I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think this is a first step between Antony. Uh, there could be a regional <coughs> hub incubation center that become a hub center, a regional level, so, uh, and at that level, the, there should be a convergence of all stockholders of the ecosystem. Like there, at the same platform, the investors, impact assessment, incubators should be there in the same incubation center so that the people from the rural areas, they come to the center, they explain their ideas, there is a convergence of all the stakeholders at the same level. This would be the one thing which can catalyze the regional ecosystem Helpful, thank you. Any other opinions? I dream about this. I don't know. Can you hear him? <laughs> I don't know if the dream will ever be realized, but if I'm allowed to dream, I would actually like, uh, you know, ecosystem to be something like, uh, you know, bank or a hotel, right? So as an entrepreneur, a like bank when or you go a hotel. In, when you walk okay. into a bank, there is somebody standing there at the at the door. Guiding you to a counter and saying, "Okay, what do you want?" Yeah. A concierge okay, I want to withdraw for my cash. Okay, come here. Let's allow you to withdraw your cash. I want to deposit my cash. If you go to a hotel, you know, we are not asking this entrepreneur or you know, if you go to a hotel as a customer, do they ask you, uh, you know, do you know in in the room that you are going to be staying, uh, you know, how does this part in my room function? And if it doesn't function, I'll not allow you to get in. So I think as an investor, as an ecosystem builder, many times we ask questions which entrepreneur may not have an answer for. So I don't think uh, investors, incubators, or you know, ecosystem builders work with a mindset that, okay, this is my customer. Anybody <coughs> running a business says that customer is king. So whatever customer wants, we give them. I have never heard investors saying, whatever my entrepreneur want, I will do that. Or an incubator <laughs> saying, whatever my entrepreneur want. <laughs> I will do that. So it's a dream. So I don't think there is, at, at this point, if you ask me, I don't think that sort of a platform exists. Uh, we're trying to work towards it. I don't think that exists. Thank you. Um, so the one, uh, the one thing I, we kept hearing from every city we visited uh, was networks or a connector or something to connect 
individuals, because every single place we went to, there's stuff happening, but it's all individual efforts and they don't tend to talk to each other. Great. Any other questions from the audience? Sir. Just regarding the conversation you've been having recently, I would hesitate using words like ecosystems and networks. We tend to borrow this from biology and casually use it. There are ingredients that help an innovator or an entrepreneur to go where they want to go. But to assume that somehow these ingredients are interdependent and interactive, which is what makes them a system, that's a little leap of faith. That's number one. Second, if you're talking of building ecosystems, uh, as a species, we'd be doing absolutely for the first time. No one else builds ecosystems. Ecosystems happen. So if you, even when we try to recreate ecosystems, like when we, when we wipe a forest out and some enthusiast decides to take it back to its wildness, uh, it's extremely debatable from an environmental point of view, whether you're creating the ecosystem that you wiped. In fact, you never recreate it. So I think if you look at more the model that Mukesh is talking about, where you're looking at the ingredients and say, how do I provide the customer the best set of ingredients to help that customer do what they want, whether it is a, a single window bank approach or a customer-oriented service sector approach in a hotel. That, I think, would lead you somewhere. But uh, you're pushing your luck if you're building ecosystems. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I agree with Ratan a bit. I, I think I personally, I myself get confused when somebody says ecosystem. And I don't really like this word <laughs> ecosystem. I want somebody to come and tell me, OK, I am providing mentoring. I am taking an idea stage entrepreneur, helping him conduct prototypes, and then help him you know, commercialize his product. So that's more visible to me. When somebody says ecosystem, I don't know what it means. It's a very invisible term for me, intangible use as a platform. I love that. One panelist question, the whole panel itself. <laughs> Why are we doing this? <laughs> um, and actually, that is a question then. Um, I, oh, sorry, unless there are others. Yeah. Please, other questions. How about look on this side? Yes. Yeah, I would just want, hello. Yeah, I would just want to focus on the social enterprise, but not for profit thing. I mean, if it is an NGO and not specific, I'm not just talking generic as an ecosystem, I'm going more specific raising of funds. For NGO, it's not for profit, you have CSR funds. That is one. But even now, if you look at it, uh, CSR are, you know, getting more prototype. They want to get into the sector, they want to get into education, kids, you know, power, but not something else. So, you know, other than the CSR, what kind of a funding arrangement is possible? See, here it's difficult for them to provide a return. And here the entrepreneur or the PE funds or the funds are looking for some kind of returns. Uh, I have live projects with me. So what can be a different financial product or if you could help me build a financial st strategy around it? Because I, if you want to know about the project, it's about the old people, serving the old people in the slum area. So, you know, you cannot actually get something out of uh, uh, the old people, you know. You cannot make them work. And the crudest uh, replies we've got from the CSR people is, I mean, they are poor. They've already lived their life. Why do you want to get behind them, you know? That is the replies we get. So, I just want to know, can there be something between, you know, a CSR funding and organizations like you, some new products coming up or something of this sort, I mean. I think life can be far more simple. We don't need to create new categories. You are probably talking yeah. to the wrong so person. How do we go about it? I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a problem for me which I'm wanting to solve. I think there is somebody who will give a grant. You're talking to a wrong person. You don't no, need to create a third okay. category. Philanthropy is one, one, one of the categories, yeah. but difficult to reach out to them. A, a low elevator pitch, just a startup. So, can there be some a differentiator or something of this sort? I'm not understanding your question. <laughs> if I think it's very sorry, I'm not sure if I understand the question either. Um, <laughs> it, uh, if I understand it, I heard I heard two questions in there. One is a question in terms of what are the funding streams to actually support ecosystem builders, as uh, the non. 
non-profit okay non-profit uh, social organizations ah. because it's going very prototype the csr part is going very very prototype they want to go into this sector they don't want to go support this sector but you know social objectives are there with people uh, running not for profit organizations our country has thousands of years of you know work in non profit segment lot of work goes there so i think there are systems there are people who support different causes you have to find a right yeah, person for that thank you ah uh, let's go over the side uh sir back here My name is Pavu, and my question: There are two people, Lena and Mukesh Sharma. See, I feel Lena presented that matrix which showed the two states, UP and Madhya Pradesh, and she felt that Madhya Pradesh had more educational background, Can and so there was a sir, better please. ecosystem. But uh, she said, but she didn't see so many entrepreneurs coming out of that system. did you uh, lena did you go into other states because you had shown lot of states you want to go into nine states or something nine cities were you able to cover the nine cities or only those two metrics you have and my question is if you are able to cover the nine cities where did you find of uh, the, the the best ecosystem which <coughs> seemed to promote maximum say entrepreneurship and same question to mukesh because mukesh has really been funding them and possibly i don't know whether he looks at andhra pradesh and tamil nadu or he goes elsewhere where did you find a similar ecosystem the best ecosystem for funding mm. okay thank you for the questions so first uh, i should say that i haven't focused on whole states we've looked specifically at particular cities so in madhya pradesh for instance we looked at bhopal only not indore or not the rest of the state um similar for lucknow we didn't look at say varanasi or other parts of uh, up um we didn't say that Bhopal, what was interesting about popal wasn't was the the sheer number of educational institutions and the fact that if there's 150 plus colleges in one city the number of young people getting an education and looking for a job and probably not finding a placement and wanting to needing to perhaps start their own thing or in any way coming out as graduates is enormous and that's a huge challenge but also a huge opportunity so so that was uh, that's where the education came from so there's a whole bunch of metrics and indicators we're using that was just a uh, number of colleges and what they're doing is just one example um we're also looking at sort of what those different colleges are doing and um how many of them are actually have an e-cell or an incubator or or are teaching such as such enterprise or un- un- entrepreneurship per se um on the best ecosystem that's a that's a dangerous <laughs> question i think uh uh it's a uh, our research is research in progress i think uh different cities have different strengths um patna of course impressive the, the government effort is impressive um when you're in patna and also the amount of associations that are on social enterprise specific associations but they might be trade associations or or similar that are really trying to get involved in entrepreneurship especially for youth or social entrepreneurship um jaipur again is an example which is buzzing in terms of an entrepreneurial and social enterprise um activities there's a lot going on there and that was very interesting but from that perspective um jaipur is also interesting because that's one place where we're seeing a new um incubator so the startup voice is emerging uh, which is a collaboration between IIM Ahmedabad and uh, the state government in in Rajasthan so again interesting new initiatives coming up um and so my last point is that we are, we're going around so we, if you look at the brochure that we we've gone to nine cities across nine states this year and we'll probably be trying to do more in the coming years but that, that's the starting point uh I think if you look at all the pieces that we talked about and if you say where all or most of these pieces exist I think beyond major cities so Mumbai Delhi Bangalore you see uh, most of these ingredients being available in one organization or another uh, outside of Mumbai Bangalore Delhi maybe Pune uh, Chennai so I think these are five six cities probably you can count on your finger once you go outside of these cities then it starts collapsing maybe one or two things are available maybe people are 
you know, there are five organizations, but they are only addressing one problem. They're not addressing other issues. Uh, and there are sectoral differences also. So, uh, some cities you get a very good medical, uh, you know, innovation happening. Uh, so, you have Ames Hospital in Delhi, you have Stanford India Biodesign Program, so you see more ideas coming out of that. <coughs> IIT Mumbai, you have Nanobios Lab, you, you see people doing some sort of work there, Chennai there is work happening. So, there are sectoral differences, uh, but yeah, mainly big five, six cities. Outside of that, I don't see all the ingredients being there. Thank you. We'll take one more question before we wrap up. On this side? Sure. Sir. Yeah. Uh, one question is, as you scale up an ecosystem, especially in the more rural areas, do you think the role of replicating ideas rather than inventing new ideas is relevant? And have you seen any examples replicating ideas? E examples where you take an enterprise and an idea, social or economic, which has worked elsewhere, and you bring it into that district, which itself is very entrepreneurial. So examples of specific enterprises or other uh, engaging with other ecosystem actors? Replication. Replication, okay. Replication. Okay, so, so just, instance, just, just, just to verify, just to try and repeat back, you're asking whether any of us have seen examples of replication of um, uh, an enterprise or initiative in one state to another state. Or, I mean, so it's a more uh, uh, philosophical question that have we paid enough attention to replication to scale up an ecosystem as opposed to thinking of ab initio invention in the cycle that you said. So if Sarvajal has been successful in one state, should we not bring it into Eastern UP to scale up an ecosystem? Is there any examples of that? I see. Okay. So, I mean, there are examples of where you see <coughs> replication happening. Um, Unlimited's franchise model for, for incubators is, is an example of replication. Um, the way I am Ahmedabad is going in and, and supporting certain um, local incubators or efforts or even collaborating with higher education institutions to get more um, uh, social enterprise focus going. Um, you also see locals in Jaipur, for instance, Jaipuria Institute is uh, doing very well in terms of entrepreneurship, teaching, and incubating student enterprises, such like. And they are uh, going to other, so they, they're becoming sort of a leader in JEPA and going to other um, colleges, engineering and business colleges nearby, and, and sort of replicating their model of teaching entrepreneurship there. So you're seeing stuff even within the ecosystems. I will just add to that, I think, uh uh, Wilgro has been operating in this space for almost 10, 12 years now. So we have seen several patterns and we have created programs that address most of the ingredients that we are talking about. At this point, we are not able to go into local you know, cities and local ecosystems and provide this in Patna, Lucknow, maybe Calcutta. But we are working on a program which will soon be launched where Wilgro's model of incubation will be replicated in I think at least four incubators and eight low-income states in, in India. In addition to that, Lemelson has always been encouraging us to take our model outside of India. So uh, they have made us work with a couple of you know, incubators outside India and uh, we are looking at a partner in Kenya and see if we can share our examples and also replicate it outside of India. So Wilgro is actively working on both of these uh, fronts. Great. Thank you all. So we're coming to the close of our time, and I was lazy, and I basically I'm going to have our panelists provide a, a one last takeaway. If there was one thing you want this audience to take away about building local ecosystems, what would that be? And we'll start with Rajiv and go down. Uh, I would like to say that uh, BRLPS, Veteran uh, Jivika, has a shown as a stood as a good example of uh, partnership between government and the professional expertise from the different sectors are working towards rural sustainable livelihoods. And that's a message we are going to make. Uh, we, I invite all the stakeholders to please come visit Bihar, work in any area if you want. We are there to support you. Thank you. Uh, I would just say if you are trying to create any, any of these ingredients that we talked about, please go and talk to at least 100 entrepreneurs in the area that you want to cater to. Understand what they exactly require and work on it. Do it in a focused way. Uh, 
don't replicate something that somebody else is doing and please provide continuity don't do it for a year and then you know never do it again so great points lena um, um, I, I think i would reach a sort of let's decentralize and democratize um, and start there's so much happening or st things are bubbling beneath the surface across tier 2 tier 3 cities in india and it's time that we need to move out of Bombay and, and Bangalore and really to sort of think about how do we collaborate together and how do we listen to what local stakeholders want rather than what we think they might need and enable and, and create a system, a, a um, non-system system that, <laughs> that enables social enterprise. Great. Thank you all for your time and uh, participation in this session. Thank you to all our panelists. Have a great rest of your Sankal.